I'll talk to you a little bit about our vision of Europe. Um, European Federation of Energy Traders is not German Federation of Energy Traders or Italian Federation of Energy Traders. It's European Federation of Energy Traders. <laughs> this very much <clears throat> reflects our vision of Europe. The vision is not like the Europe we have seen a little bit earlier, where you have national frontiers fragmenting a European energy market. It is a vision of a single European energy market where consumers and companies can choose from whom they buy electricity and gas. And this is something we started about 10 years ago with a small group of people. We were about uh, not more than five, six people at the time. Today we have grown a lot. We have 120 companies in energy trading in our membership. And we are active in about 20 countries, most recently also in the Republic of Turkey. We are promoting pan-European energy trading, and that means not only advocacy for a liberalized market, but also advocacy for standardization, because this very often is also a problem which is often neglected. For those of you who travel a lot, you will see that you need all sorts of sockets to serve. From country to country in England, there are up to three uh, sockets uh, currently in circulation. So we also look at the standardization of business processes. You can go on. <clears throat> I have not shown you the companies which are members of our uh, association, but more or less groups. We have these other groups who are today uh, engaging in trading, so in wholesale transactions for energy, may it be emissions, may it be electricity, may it be gas. So you have basically the financial players who are very active in the emissions markets and the more liquid um, financial markets. And then you have the, let's say, old type gas companies who are trading uh, in order to optimize their existing physical portfolio. Then you have the utility type companies, which are in fact power producers such as NL or um, EDF or others. And then you have uh, the pure trading companies, which are those who don't necessarily have assets to, to do their business. They, they do it very much on their own view of market developments. You can go on. Now, this is what you would like to see. So the national borders go away, and we have, in fact, a European market which is not really um, ends at the barriers, and we don't want to have different prices for electricity, for example, what we currently have. We still have national, regional pricing. This all would need to go away in order to, um, to provide the basis for more competition, and that's what it really is. Competition brings about improvement, it brings about lower prices, it brings about more efficiency for economy, and this is what we believe. Please go on, <clears throat> on the next slide. Now, the Italian uh, energy market always is a bit, little bit of a peculiar market for us, and it has been peculiar in many ways, not in a bad way, but in a, in a peculiar way. Business is done here very often on a national level. Um, it has been very difficult. I worked myself in the gas industry for a couple of years to bring gas into Itali Italy and to Italian consumers. But we have seen all in all over the last 10 years, also through the implementation of the third package, a great improvement on the power sector. We can today say that we have a more or less liquid power market, obviously not by comparison to the northern markets, but still. There is a visible progress on the power market. However, on the gas market, the situation has been different. Uh, the gas market, we feel, is still very much a secluded market. It is still very difficult to sort of see, interfere with the backyards which are protected by uh, the status quo and also, let's be honest, by the establishment. Now, next. If you look at the bureaucratic obstacles, for people like us working in regulation and in, 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 obviously in, in implementation of European regu uh, regulation in Italy, one of the things we always observe is that when there are consultations and they're coming out, it is really very, you have to be quick in order to <laughs> consult because sometimes it is just a couple of days until these consultation then expires and it is very often that we have to ask for a lengthier period to respond. A trading contract is something which is not done by regulation. This should be done by companies doing this business, and it should not, certainly not be the language which is the main driver of it. But nevertheless, we have, um, 
we have translated the Italian trading documentation into Italian, and by trading into Italian, we were hoping that it had a better uptake. Now, has this really been achieved? I don't know, quite frankly, ladies and gentlemen. I see a much better uptake, for example, in countries like Poland or in countries like um, Hungary uh, compared to Italy. So it is maybe also a little bit the different tradition how you do business here. Labeling of gas origin, these are these things. Well, why would you label gas once it's in the European Union and have different um, um, fee arrangements or, let's say, duty arrangements attached to this? We know where the origin of the gas is very often is non-EU, but once it is actually entering the European <laughs> Union, and this means for, in case of Italy, uh, very often in Baumgarten in Austria, it should be then treated like European gas, because once it enters the European Union, it is in the European Union and becomes European. Now these are just two little examples. Now we can go one on. minute. Yeah, will be no problem. You just see a car here. Uh, very often uh, you can think we would be in the right car, these rich energy traders, but. We see ourselves very often more like on the left side. One more. Um, now we have uh, also uh, two years ago uh, set up an Italian group where we have Italian companies who would like to improve their uh, competitiveness and also their resourcing by having international contacts. And we invite you also to look at this. Um, it is a growing group and a very professionally led and we hope that through this uh, new Italian task force, Italy will finally also close the gaps which have been, which have been seen in the gas industry. And that's all for me. Thank you. Thank you.